Shalom, welcome to the Jewish Task Force, JTF. I'm Chaim Ben Pesach, and we have another program with the great David Ben Moshe. And this program is going to be very important because on this program, we're going to be telling you about the growing threat of what a Kamala Harris presidency would mean to America and to Israel, and especially to Israel the tremendous threat that she poses to Israel because of her vicious anti-Semitism. We're also going to discuss the fact that although we support Donald Trump, there are problems with him, and we're going to discuss what happened in last night's election, how he creates problems by supporting terrible candidates, and we're going to give you some examples. Despite that, we still have to support Trump because Biden is much worse. And we're going to discuss also a $1 billion donation. A Jewish woman an evil Jewish woman, donated $1 billion to the type of Nazi Jew haters that are screaming on campuses against Israel and screaming for Jewish blood and supporting the Hamas terrorists. And she gave those precisely those types of students who are doing that, she gave them free tuition worth $1 billion. We're going to be discussing that. So this is going to be an important show that you should that you should be paying attention to. But first of all, this program is dedicated to Rafua Shlema, complete recovery for Mark Ben Sara, Sharon Mitman, Shlomo Ben Sara, Dorit Bat Sara, Ruven Ben Shoshana, and Ruth Bat Sara. And to Ilui Neshamot, elevating of the souls for Malka Bat Meir, Allegra Bat Shlomo, Daniel Nankin, Victor Chazdai, Pesach Zeb Ben Dov, Lunita Adler, Shifra Hoffman, Ruven Hoffman, Barry Hoffman, Aramir Kahana, Rap Ben Yamin Kahana, Tsipora Fegi Bat Liba, Yosef Ben Meir, Robert Mitman, Dennis Shore, Helen Friedman, and Charles Zolat. Kamala Harris, the vice, the so-called vice president of the United States, who is possibly the dumbest vice president we've ever had. I mean, literally uh, IQ on the mentally retarded level. It's just incredible. I mean, she's the vice president. She became the district attorney of San Francisco by sleeping with the mayor of San Francisco. There was a black mayor in San Francisco, and she slept with him. And he was 80 years old. She was 40 years old at the time, and she had an affair with him. And of course, <clears throat> of course, he was married. And as a result of that, he promoted her to all types of positions in the city of San Francisco. And based on that, she eventually got elected to district attorney in San Francisco. She let all the cop killers, all the worst criminals out. She wouldn't prosecute them. Because she agrees with cop killing, and she agrees with, 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 with. She feels that she, she, she feels that we, we have to understand the rage. There's a rage against racism, and we have to understand the rage. And so she's very much a Black Lives Matter individual who, she hates white people. She's very anti-Semitic. She's married to a Jew, a, a wealthy Jew, Jewish businessman. She married him for his money, and. And uh, this self-hating Jew agrees with her anti-Semitism. He's a Jewish anti-Semite. And this week, she made a speech condemning Israel and calling for an immediate Israeli ceasefire, which would allow the Hamas terrorists to immediately win the war. Because if there's a ceasefire and Hamas is not eliminated, that's immediate Israeli surrender and immediate, uh, immediate victory for the terrorists over Israel. Now, Israel, in the end, is not going to win this war because they have cowardly, impossible leaders that don't want to win. This is why we support Moshe Feiglin and the Zehut party. But despite that, to have Israel immediately surrender right now when, all the, when, when you have all these thousands of Hamas terrorists still in charge of major parts of the Gaza district, that would be the ultimate, ultimate, her, most horrific defeat for Israel. And then Israel's very survival would be in grave jeopardy. And this is what Kamala Harris demanded this week, condemning Israel and demanding an immediate ceasefire, demanding what the Hamas supporters demand, because she's a Hamas supporter. And her self-hating Yudenrat Kapo husband, her self-hating Jewish Yudenrat Kapo husband is a Hamas supporter, is anti-Israel, hates Israel and hates his own people. What a dangerous situation this will be. Because if Joe Biden wins this election, chas v'chalila, God forbid, if he wins this election, there is a very large, very high chance, in my view, it's probable that Kamala Harris will become president. Because I don't think Joe, Joe Biden can fill out of the next five years. He's got the whole year here, the whole election year here, plus the four-year term starting next year. That's five years. 
I don't think Joe Biden can handle five years. I don't think he can handle five minutes of the presidency. You but can even see his deterioration from year to year to year since he took office. He was bad then, but he's far worse now. No question about it. And so I believe that Kamala Harris will be will probably become president if Biden, God forbid, wins. So the vicious, obsessive, monstrous anti-Semitism from this from this evil creature. That'll become the, the that'll become the official policy of the United States government. Not that Biden is not anti Biden is also anti-Semitic and his policies are also, are also viciously anti-Israel. But she is she is like the demonstrators on the college campuses screaming for Israel's destruction and supporting Hamas. That's what she is. That's where she that's where her mind is. And her husband is like the Jewish, the Jews who join with the Hamas demonstrators on college campuses to, to call for Israel's destruction and burn Israeli flags. That's her husband. That's her Jewish husband. Can you imagine them in the White House? Imagine her as president and her husband is the first man. What do they call it? The first man? He's not a man. He's a piece of subhuman dreck. But I mean, what, what, I, I, I don't even know what you would call him. I don't even care. The first husband, the first... First gentleman, I guess. Yeah, the first, yeah, the first Judenrat capo, uh, the first Judenrat capo traitor. If he, if he was there together with her, can you imagine what the consequences of that are going to be? She'll use the full powers of the presidency of the United States of America, the most powerful nation on earth, to do everything she can to destroy little Israel. And she will rally and summon the whole world, and the world will be happy to join in. The world is always happy to join in to, to destroy the Jews. The world doesn't like Jews that fight back. The world likes Jews who are to be pitied because they were massacred. Right. And, uh, well, yeah, the, the world actually... <laughs> It's it's ironic because the world, despite the fact that the, even the anti-Semitic world respects Jews who fight back, even though they don't like it, they don't they they hate the Jews anyway, no matter what the Jews do. But when the Jews do fight back, even the anti-Semites respect them, uh, and they have contempt for Jews who don't. But but any in any event, it doesn't matter. With Kamala Harris, we know what we're going to get with her and her husband, and her speech this week should really show us where we stand. Why it is so essential that we elect Donald Trump, why it is absolutely essential that, that he win this election. Not because he's good, because he's not. He's bad. And I'm going to explain to you in a moment why. But, but because Biden and Harris are much worse. Now, having said that, I just I do want us to be prepared for the problems that we're going to get when Donald Trump gets elected, because there are a lot of he's also a very dangerous person for Israel and for America. Because Donald Trump only cares about Donald Trump. I'm sorry. It's a fact. He always picks the worst possible candidates in the Republican primaries to be Republican candidates. Always picks the worst. Republicans lost control of Congress three times because of Donald Trump. Because he consistently picked the worst candidates to run and Republicans lost again and again. The candidates he picked, the overwhelming majority of them lost in races which where Republicans were supposed to win. This has happened over and over again with Donald Trump. And I could go through the examples of the doctor, you know, doctor, what was his name from Pennsylvania? The doctor who had a TV show. Uh, Oz? Oz, Dr. Oz, okay, who was a Turkish, who was in the Turkish army and a Turkish citizen, Turkish Muslim, a, a devout Muslim Turkish citizen. And just the worst candidate, and he lost to 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 a brain dead Democrat opponent. I mean, just things that wouldn't have happened if Trump had not intervened. When he intervenes, he always picks the worst candidates. North Carolina, yesterday, Trump's candidate for governor of North Carolina won the Republican primary thanks to Trump. Mark Robinson, a black Nazi, Nazi who quotes Hitler, quotes Adolf Hitler. He won the Republican primary for governor of North Carolina with support from Donald Trump. This is someone who makes vicious Jew-hating remarks, blames the Jews for the problems of blacks. That's who you want as the Republican nominee for governor of North Carolina. Trump supporter. Trump couldn't care less if he's anti-Semitic because Trump agrees with a lot of his anti-Semitism. And who's his opponent? Josh Stein is his Democratic opponent. <laughs> In North Carolina... 
a self-hating Jew, Judenrat Kapo Jew, wins the Democrat nomination. So what a wonderful choice we have. We have a Jewish anti-Semite, Josh Stein, running against a black anti-Semite, Mark Robinson. That's the choice for governor of North Carolina. And again, it's thanks to Trump. You could have had you could have had other Republican candidates for governor. And Josh Stein, by the way, would probably lose in North Carolina if you had other Republican candidates. But because they picked a candidate who's half nuts, a black candidate who's half nuts and, and, and makes crazy statements, because they picked him, the race now for governor of North Carolina is very close. And, and in fact, some polls show Josh Stein even with a slight lead now in North Carolina. This is who Trump picks as candidates. Terrible candidates, always. Also thanks to Trump. Democrat Congressman Adam Schiff, whom Trump hates. Trump hates him, but he's going to be the next senator from, from, from California, thanks to Trump. Schiff was running behind Catherine Porter. Kathleen Porter or Catherine Porter? I don't remember. Porter was her last name. It's Kathleen. Kathleen Porter. Okay, Kathleen Porter. She was the congresswoman from California. She, you know, which she's an evil person. All the Democrats are evil. She's an evil person also, but, you know, but I'd rather have her than the self-hating Jew. The self-hating Jew is the worst because that's a chilul Hashem. It's a desecration of God's name when Jews are involved with such evil behavior. So Schiff was running against her and Porter actually had a slight lead in, in the polls. She was doing quite well. She, you know, she had a good chance of winning. Then Trump starts attacking Schiff. Starts focusing on Schiff and tweeting, tweeting against Schiff. And of course, among Democrat voters in California, in, in Cal Democrat Democrats in California, if Trump is attacking you, that's that's the that's the best thing that could happen to you. Based on that, Schiff raised tens of millions of dollars based on that, on Trump's attacks from left wing donors. And Trump and, and Schiff started shooting up in the polls. Every time Trump attacked him, he went up in the polls in California. Not only that, Schiff got the Republicans, the Republican House, to censor, I mean, I'm not Schiff, uh, Trump got the Republican House to censor Schiff. They actually, the House voted to censor him. Can you imagine what a boost that is among left-wing Democrats? I mean, what a hero, they made Schiff into a hero because the Republicans in the House are censoring him. Be and they censored him because of what he said against Trump. I mean, that's the most popular thing you could do among Democrat voters. So because of that, guess what happened? Schiff went up in the polls. Porter went down in the polls. Schiff yesterday wound up, wound up being one of the two candidates. They have a runoff system in California where two, the two candidates can be in the runoff. Schiff was one of the people in the runoff. It was going to be Schiff versus Porter. But because thanks to Trump, it's not. It's going to be Schiff versus this guy Garvey who's the Republican candidate, and the Republicans have zero chance of winning in California. Schiff will be the next senator from California, thanks to Donald Trump. And Sh Trump didn't want that. But a lot of the things he does are, frankly, brainless. Garvey, that's Steve Garvey, who used to play first base for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, Steve Garvey, who also is com com completely unqualified to be president and, and just uh, you know he didn't want to be he didn't want to be accused of being a conservative he refused to identify himself as conservative even <laughs> you know another with republicans like that who needs democrats but anyway um the problem is now schiff is going to win now because of this now schiff there's nothing you can do anymore to stop him schiff schiff it's going to be schiff versus garvey and in california california votes two to one democrat so Schiff will win by a landslide now. That wasn't going to happen. If Trump kept would just keep his big mouth shut, Schiff, who is his biggest enemy, would not have been elected senator from California. Now, having said all of that, you're probably going to say, what? You have Zionists for Trump, and this is the way you speak about Trump? Yes, because we're honest about this. But as bad as that all that is, Biden is much worse, much worse because he's obsessed with destroying Israel. And as far as America is concerned, unfortunately, Trump didn't build the wall and didn't do a lot of things that, that, that someone like Ted Cruz or Ron DeSantis would have done. Ron DeSantis or Ted Cruz would have closed the border, would have built the wall. It's a shame that people didn't put them, didn't make them the Republican nominee. 
the dumb voters didn't, the dumb Republicans didn't want to make them the nominee. But at least under Trump, you didn't have this gigantic, unbelievably huge invasion that is taking place. So Biden will bring about the destruction of America much faster. That's for sure. There is a tremendous increase in the number of illegals crossing the border and in the demographic decline of the United States. That's taking place at a much faster pace, at a much faster clip under Joe Biden. And whatever so, the count is of those illegals coming in, they estimate that 4 million are not in that count because they got into the country and just disappeared. So whatever they finally come up with as a final number, you could add 4 million more to that. Well, if that's true, then we're talking about 11 million because their, their number is 7 million so far that have come across illegally under Biden. And again, that those figures are much, much higher than what you had under Trump. And if, let, let me tell you something, if Trump is, if Biden is reelected, Biden, by the way, is not opening the border completely because he's running for reelection and this is not popular, letting all the illegals in. It's not popular. Even among Democrat voters, it's not popular. So after the election, you know when he completely opens the border, which is what their plan is, when he and Kamala Harris completely open that border and let the floodgates open up, that's the end of the United States. That's the end of the United States. And, and, as, and, and as far as Israel is concerned, Biden and Kamala Harris and, and Anthony Blinken are obsessively, fanatically cracking down on the Jews in Judea and Samaria, including the hilltop youth. Do I have to tell you what that will mean for Israel? If, God forbid, they really crack down and create a situation where they, with, with a hilltop, where they defeat the hilltop youth and the Jewish settlers in Judea and Samaria, God forbid, then there'll be a Palestinian terrorist state. And that's suicide for Israel. This is a matter of life and death. We have got to defeat Biden and Harris. As annoyed as I am at Trump for his stupid tweeting and all the other stupid people and the stupid people he supports when he for office and all the other dumb things he's done and for the fact that he didn't keep his promises on the bridge, on the, on the wall and all the other things he did, as much as I'm annoyed with him, this is a matter of life and death. We've got to elect him because the alternative is so much worse. We have no choice. We have got to elect him. We have got to defeat Biden and Harris. It's got to. It's it's got to be done now. One more subject before we turn to David and his important subjects that he speaks about. A Jewish woman, ninety-three-year-old Jewish woman. She's a multi-billionaires. Ruth Gottesman. Which means, may her name and memory be obliterated. May the name of the wicked rot. This 93-year-old self-hating Jewish beast announced that she's donating $1 billion. $1 billion with a B. To the Albert Einstein Medical Center in the Bronx. Anybody know what the Bronx is? Who lives in the Bronx? Just think about who lives in the Bronx, okay? Those think are precise. Think of the term Fort Apache. You remember in the 70s, it got the name Fort Apache because they're surrounded by hostiles. Right. And this is, the, yeah, the police precinct was called Fort Apache. Yeah, because, because they were surrounded by, right, because they were surrounded by, by hostile people. This is a school where almost 100% of the students come from the groups, from, from those particular groups, that are the ones screaming and yelling and demonstrating to destroy Israel and burn Israel and, and, and there should be a Holocaust and the Jews deserve it and, and chanting Nazi chants and, 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 say, and saying they agree with the Hamas terrorists. They just got free tuition from this, from this beast, Ruth Gotsiman. And everybody, they're all praising her. Oh, what a wonderful thing she did. And by the way, that means they're going to become so-called doctors. People with IQs in the 20s and 30s are going to be doctors. People who get 20s and 30s on their tests are going to become doctors because that's what we do with affirmative action. We put people in who are completely, utterly unqualified, who have a hard time reading their own their own diploma from the from the school they graduate from, and they are they become doctors. 
and the hospitals right away hire them because you got to. Federal government demands it. Another complaint I have about Trump, Trump never eliminated affirmative action. Not even, I don't, all right, I'm not going to go into that now, but it's very, very, I mean, what a, boy, what a, what a, what a tragic, uh, the, the tragic opportunities that were missed and the, the, the tragic consequences for America. Whereas Ron DeSantis and Ted Cruz, they went after affirmative action every chance they got. Why didn't you pick these good people? Why? Anyway, uh, so we're going to have affirmative action. We, we have all oh, these affirmative action doctors now all getting free tuitions. She's using her $1 billion to give free tuition to all of these beasts who hate Israel and hate the Jewish people, are jealous of the Jews because the Jews work hard and get good grades and are smart and disciplined. And they're not, they're not, they're not disciplined and they're not smart and they don't get good grades and they're not qualified. And, and they're just evil, lazy, selfish people. And she gave them a billion dollars in free tuition. Billion dollars. Now, can you imagine if she had given the billion dollars to a good cause like the Hilltop Youth? If she gave it to the Hilltop Youth, you know what happened to Israel? If she gave a billion dollars to the Hilltop... Forget about a billion dollars. One percent of a billion dollars is ten million dollars. If she gave ten million dollars to JTF, gave JTF a contribution for ten million dollars for the Hilltop Youth, one percent of what she gave to these beasts that are screaming, free Palestine! from the river to the sea and they don't even by the way they interviewed the people screaming from the river to the sea they asked them which river what river are you talking about what sea they didn't know one of them said the mississippi you know they you know they the river to the sea complete morons hateful evil morons but if she had given just 10 million dollars to jtf do you know what a difference that would make we would change Jewish history forever with that type of support. We could change Jewish history forever. JTF gave somewhat over a million dollars the past three years to the Hilltop Youth, over a million. And in a three-year period, do you know how little that is? I mean, you know how little that is when you think about how much a house cost? Think about how much a new community costs or building, building something or building roads or building... You know how little that is? And with that, we just have one example. You know, just this week, we saw that um, in, in um, um, one of the Jewish communities there that started out with one Jewish family when we started three years. When JTF started three years ago, supporting them, started this campaign of giving all of our budget to them, they, they had just one Jewish family there. The name of that community, by the way, is Ramat Migron, and it's in Binyamin. Binyamin is Benjamin. It's in the hills of Benjamin. Binyamin, beautiful area. They had just one Jewish family. Today they have 10 Jewish families there. And, and the Arabs, by the way, around them, many of the Arabs are leaving or abandoning the area because they see the Jews are not going anywhere. They, they were willing to stay there, and the Arabs were willing to struggle and everything else to take over if, if they thought the Jews weren't going to be there. But they see these Jews, these stubborn Jews are not leaving. That's encouraging the Arabs to leave. Instead, tens of thousands of Arabs are fleeing from Judea and Samaria. And the Jews, the, Jew, the Jewish positions on the hilltops are strengthening with just $1 million from JTF. One, a little bit, of, a little, it's a little bit more, but not that much more than a million dollars. Now, if we had had $10 million, and not over a three-year period, but all at once we get a check for $10 million, can you imagine what that would do, what what boost, what a boost that would be to Jewish settlement in, in the land of Israel, how that would give a boost that could, that could save the Jewish people and save the land of Israel and save the state of Israel? You know what the implications are of saving the state of Israel? The world's survival depends upon Israel. The whole world depends upon what God decides to do, and God makes his decisions based upon what happens to that tiny country. 
and to that people in the Middle East. Am Hanivchar, the chosen people. That's what the Bible says. And we could have we could have provided a, a backbone and support to the hilltop youth that would have changed Jewish history forever. And instead, this beast, this 93-year-old beast, she as if as if they're going to be grateful to the Jews. All the other Jews, you know how many other Jews have given huge amounts of money to them? And they hate the Jews. They detest, and you know who I'm referring to. They detest the Jews. They're jealous and hateful. They despise the Jewish people. Even when they're Republicans, they despise the Jewish people. Even when they become Republican candidates for governor of North Carolina, they quote Hitler and they hate the Jewish people. And she gives them a billion dollars. Anyway, um, of course, we're going to continue to do what's good. And because God is on our side, her billion dollars is not going to stop us. Uh, with, with the little that we have, we're going to make a difference, as we have been doing for the past several years. We're going to continue to make a difference. Thanks to what JTF has been doing, the Jews do have a fighting chance in Judea and Samaria. If not for that, we wouldn't even have a shot. We wouldn't have a shot. You want the Jews to win in Judea and Samaria? You want to defeat the, the Muslim Nazis that want to destroy Israel? This is your chance. There are two ways that you can support the Hilltop Youth. One is that you can go to our Hebrew main page, hayamin.org, and you click on the donate button. You just go to the Hebrew main page, and click on the donate button, and you can very easily and conveniently a donate. By the way, the, it says Ivrit. If you see Hebrew letters on top, on the English, you see JTF.org, go to JTF.org. On top, you'll see Hebrew letters. Click on the Hebrew letters. Click on those Hebrew letters. It will take you to the Hebrew main page, and then you click on the donate button, which is in English. So you, you go to JTF.org, number one, which is our English page. On top, you'll see letters in Hebrew. Click on those Hebrew letters. It's a link. Click on those Hebrew letters. Okay, it says Ivrit, which means Hebrew. You click on those Hebrew letters, you get to hayamin.org, and on hayamin.org, on top, there's a donate button in English. And you can click on the donate button and very easily help the Hilltop Youth. And what a great, what a great thing that is. What a difference you can make. What good you'll be doing for the world. This is something you can be proud of, that you'll be proud of that you did. Now, if you don't want to do it online, you can do it through checks and money orders in the regular mail. You just make a check or money order made out to JTF and send it to JTF PO Box 650327, Fresh Meadows, New York, 11365. And that address, you just go to contact us on top, jtf.org. You go to jtf.org, it says contact us. You'll find the address on top, uh, how you can how you can uh, send your support to help the hilltop, the heroic hilltop youth. They keep doing evil, and we're going to keep doing good. They keep bringing darkness into the world, and we're going to continue to try to light the world with truth and with justice. Rabbi Kahana, our blessed leader, Rabbi Meir Kahana, Zechar Tzaddik V'Kadosh Libracha Hashem Yikom Damo. Our blessed leader, Rabbi Kahana, always used to say that, that Jews and righteous Gentiles are like a lit candle in the world. If you have one candle, you're surrounded by darkness, but just one candle lights an area way beyond way beyond what you would think this is only one little candle and yet it 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 lights it lights up a whole area and he said that every jew and every righteous gentile can be like a candle in the darkness a candle that le that 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 leads us and guides us to the final redemption and i remember once uh, one of his followers said at one of the meetings well uh, this was Israeli in Hebrew. They asked him. They said, "Well, why? Um, well, how do we be? Uh, you, you, you got to give us instructions on on what to do to become a candle. How do we do that? How do we become a, a lit candle? How do we do that?" And he and he said, he said, "Just follow the righteous course that we've set out to save Israel and save save the world. Follow this righteous course," he said. He said, 
if you follow this righteous course that we've set before us and that God has set before us in the Bible, he said, he said, by doing, by giving you this, I've already given you the match. I've given you the ability to light that candle and to become a force for good. And if you become a force for good, then you have real meaning in your life. Then there's a good purpose that you will put in this world, and that's something you'll never regret. David? Well, I want to start with the mayor of Denver, Colorado. Colorado, once upon a time, was a rib rock, red state, Republican state. Today, it votes slightly more Democrat than Republican because of uh, Denver. And the mayor of Denver actually came out and admitted that he favors immigrants, illegal immigrants, illegal aliens, which is the correct term, over American citizens. And he's doing everything he can for the illegal aliens. So you people in Colorado should vote this guy out or if you have the means of a recall election, do that because he's stealing services that you're paying for that should be going to you. He's stealing it and putting it towards illegal aliens who shouldn't be in this country. Just imagine all the people they've murdered in the time they've been pouring in here who should be alive because these people shouldn't be here. They should be stopped at the border by any means necessary. And speaking about uh, the illegal immigrants, well, their version of legal immigrants are now being accused by a lot of black people as being racist. The immigrants from south of the border that came here legally and own businesses don't want to hire blacks. The it, the Hispanics are calling the blacks lazy. And I've seen that. I used to, many years ago when I lived in New York, every Saturday morning I would go to New Jersey because I was on staff of the world's largest 50s organization, 1950s music. And we'd go to the, it was in Clifton, New Jersey. And we'd go to a diner nearby called the Lexington Diner. And they only had two waitresses. They also had the best French fries I ever had in my life. They were beer battered. <laughs> they only had two waitresses. And by, the, by the way, JTF is not advocating doing any of that Jews for Jews to go to non-kosher places on Shabbat. We don't advocate that. No. Okay, but the thing is, I, I did. I that. know that you did. I, I understand you're saying you did that, but I, I, you know, I don't want people to think that we that we advocate doing that. We don't. But okay, go ahead. Well, to every rule, there's an exception. Um, not, not, so at the there shouldn't be, not for this. But anyway, the only exception for breaking the Sabbath is to save a life, is to save life for, for Mesirut Nefesh or, or uh, Pikuach Nefesh. Pikuach Nefesh. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so at the diner, we spoke to the owner, who was a Puerto Rican. He spoke almost perfect English, so he came here as a youngster. And we asked him, where are the waitresses? He said he has a, he doesn't put a sign in the window waitresses wanted. And the waitresses were two white women, Americans. And uh, he doesn't put a sign in the window because he's afraid he's going to get blacks and blacks don't want to work. So here you have Hispanics saying this. And a lot of blacks are getting really angry, not at just the illegals, which you may see on the news, where they're complaining that, all their services are now shut off in favor of the illegal aliens, but also because they're calling these Hispanics the clan with a tan, and they're going to start suing them because they want jobs. And then even if they work, you're going to have to put up with complaints, and eventually there'll be lawsuits. It's it doesn't work out in the end. It, it's not good. If the Hispanics see this, uh, it's just, it's something that doesn't work. And I, I put this on my Facebook page. I'm not going to read it. I'll paraphrase it. We're being invaded by millions of people from south of the border. Included in that group are probably some Muslim terrorists, probably some 
Chinese military age men who are here to scout out what America is like, and a lot of criminals. Some of these Hispanics who break our law the, the minute they set foot on American soil, so they're already criminals, but some of them, a few of them come here to work, but what are they capable of? These are not doctors, these are not scientists, these are not judges, these are not teachers. They can all, they're only capable of the most menial tasks. And they're taking those menial tasks, tasks away from college kids, the few who may still want to work, or our lowest echelon who are only capable of menial tasks. The Hispanics are taking it. Then we have the rest that are coming you mean in. The illegal, you mean the illegal aliens are taking We're not talking about all Hispanics here. We're no, the illegal aliens are taking yeah. it. Okay. Because the, the Hispanics that come here legally start businesses. Oh, by the way, a lot of Hispanics are against illegal immigration, you, you know, and, and in fact, uh, the latest polls show that Trump is carrying the Hispanic vote. You know that he's, he's, yes. he's, yes. he's the majority of Hispanics, according to the polls, are planning to vote for Trump. Anyway, go ahead. So some come here to work. Some come here to work the system and get free benefits. And I'm talking about the illegals. And boy, are they getting free benefits now. They will probably never have to work unless these benefits are cut off because they're getting many fortunes from our government. And our government is $34 trillion in debt. Where is this money coming from? All they could do is print it up, which devalues it, as you can see at the gas pump. Now, today I saw gas here is three thirty nine a gallon. New Year's Day, it was two eighty four a gallon. That was rock bottom here, but now it's three thirty nine. So this is going to kick off another round of inflation because everything travels via oil. So if oil goes up and travel costs go up, shipping costs go up, then everything in the store has to go up. And if everything in the store goes up, you're expected to ask for a larger raise. Maybe uh, on fixed income, the government will give you a bigger raise next year if you're on Social Security. But where is this money coming from? All they could do, it's a vicious cycle because then they have to print up more because they just don't have it. Eventually, we're not even going to have enough taxpayer money to pay the interest on this debt. And we're getting very close to that. Do you know, do you know by the way, I'm sorry to interject, but... No, you go ahead. You know, by the way, that the United States now is adding $1 trillion to the national debt every 100 days. A trillion dollars every 100 days. You know what that means? $10 billion added to the national debt every single, every single day. $10 billion a day. This is insanity. By the way, okay. figure that out. Figure, fig, figure out 10, if, it, if it's 10 billion a day, that means it's for every human, for every resident of the United States, about $30 a day is being added to the national debt every single day for every single resident, of the, for all 330 million residents of the United States added to the national debt. Can you imagine if you were going deeper into debt by $30 every single day? And, 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 and if you multiply that by 100, that means you're going $3,000 further into debt every 100 days. And every year, you're going about $10,000 deeper and deeper into debt. That's for every person. That's not, that's for little babies. That's for people in there, people who are 100 years old. That's for everybody, everybody. $10,000 per person deeper into debt. That's how bad it is. A, bill, a, a trillion dollars every 100 days, $10 billion every single day going deeper into debt. You think a country like that is going to have a future if this continues? We can't, eventually, we're not even going to be able to pay the interest on the debt. As we explained mo a few months ago, if you were given a trillion dollars and you had us on the first day of the year zero, if you were given a trillion dollars and you had to spend a million dollars every single day from then till now, you would still not have spent a trillion dollars. That's how much a trillion dollars is. And then, of course, other illegal aliens come here to 
sell drugs, and steal from the gringo. And we can't stop this invasion at all. We can't even touch it because our leaders are not only in bed with the invaders, they're welcoming them and rewarding them for what they're doing. Our leaders are traitors. They are elected to govern us. And when they turn against us, the American people do nothing. I was watching a documentary on the Second World War this past weekend, and uh, I was looking at Manila. After MacArthur attacked Manila to free it from the Japanese, it was pure rubble. I, I saw French cities that were hit with artillery fire that were pure rubble, artillery fire and some bombs, and German cities, which were bombed and missed. A few cities were firebombed, pure rubble. And today they're all built up to look like newer versions of how they used to look. You know, it's the old style European building, except that it's new. The streets are spotless. The streets are safe, except where maybe the, uh, the Muslims are, maybe like in Berlin or Paris, but uh, the, the streets in these smaller cities and towns are safe, they're clean, everything is new and spotless. You look at Manila, the Philippines are not a rich country. It's all built up to look far better than it was before it was knocked down. You look at Japan, Tokyo is firebombed with over 100,000 people killed more than the atomic bombs. Because uh, General Curtis LeMay got the idea, fly the B-29s in low and carry incendiary bombs because the houses there, most of them are made of wood and paper and they will set up a glowing fire. So he did that. And then you look at the other cities that were bombed. And then you even look at the two that were atomic bombed. And it's there's one brick building standing here, and maybe uh, 300 yards down, there's another brick building. But in between, there's nothing but rubble and dead bodies. And you look at these cities today. They are thriving. Thousands of bright lights with advertisements. It looks like a large version of Las Vegas with the, with the lights and the people and the traffic and the good times and the safety. And then you look at our cities. Aren't we the country that won the war? You look at Detroit. You look at Los Angeles with homeless people living in tents, living in cartons. Human waste, if you try to walk down the street, you're limited because there's tents and cartons. And then in the open area, it's like a landmine. It's like a minefield because of all the human waste. You travel on a subway in New York, you go down into the station and all you smell is urine. You, you smell mold because the water just drips into the subway station. I don't even know where it's coming from. A lot of the tiles that were once considered fancy tiles are falling down along the walls of the station. The trains, they're always breaking down because the people have no respect for anything that's in this country. Abuse it, and when it breaks, cast it off, cast it away and just replace it. Nothing is repaired. Everything is disposable these days. So who really won the war in the long term? Germany is all built back up. France is all built back up. The Philippines and Japan are all built back up. Japan was probably the, the most flattened. And it's uh, they're all modern cities with bright lights. And you could just see the excitement in the city. Our cities are places where you don't want to be because they're not safe. There's a criminal hiding in almost every bush. And you don't know when they're going to come out. And if you're lucky, all they'll do is punch you in the face and run away. If not, they'll stick a, a gun or a knife in your side. And you'll have to turn over everything you have. We built those European and Asian cities back up on the Marshall Plan. And we had budget surpluses. So these traitors, crooks and traitors, in our government at every level have destroyed this country. But I don't blame them. I blame the American people for letting it happen and just sitting by 
slobbering pizza, guzzling beer, and watching football and getting beer bellies. The only good thing I can say is at least you don't smoke anymore. Dalton, our continuing saga with Tiffany Henyard. The uh, head of the city council called the trustees is going to run against her. His name is Jason House. He seems like an honest guy, but we'll see. When he beats her, we'll see what he does when he becomes mayor. Because Tiffany Henyard, when she was a trustee running for mayor, she pointed out all the thievery by the existing mayor and then she did what he did on steroids. So they, the council voted to have an investigation on her. Meanwhile, and they also voted to ask the state and every agency in the state to investigate her, and the FBI is investigating her. Of course, Pritzker's, the people under Pritzker, they're not going to do anything. She's a Democrat. Pritzker, Pritzker is Pritzker's the, the governor. Of Illinois. Governor of Illinois, yeah. He's not going to do anything. She's a Democrat. Another billionaire. Another, by the way, multi-billionaire self-hating Jew. Another self-hating Jew. Gives all his money to enemies of his own people. <laughs> the, the list is endless. No. And uh, she's black. She's a she. A real she. And uh, she's the first female mayor of that town. They're not going to do anything. But... The council voted to investigate her, and she vetoed their vote. So we got to see if they have enough votes to override her veto. I have this. Maybe you've heard of, uh, I think you pronounce her name, Ayn Rand. This Ayn is Rand. A, Ayn Rand. I heard Ayn. Maybe. Look, okay. Maybe. It looks like Ayn to me, but uh, maybe. I heard Ayn. Maybe. She was born in 1905. And became, uh, she was Russian born. She became an American philosopher and writer. And uh, in 1982, these were her words. When you notice that to produce, you need to get permission from those who do not produce anything. When you check that money flows to those who do not deal with goods, but with favors, when you realize that many become rich by the bribery and for influence more than by your work and that the laws do not protect you from them, but on the contrary, they are the ones who are protected against you. When you discover that corruption is rewarded and honesty becomes a self-sacrifice, then you can assert without fear of being wrong that your society is doomed. And my last thing from that I these I put these things on my Facebook this week. The last thing I put on Facebook was right now the military enlistments are way down. And it, what I wrote was white males no longer want to enlist. They claim they don't want to defend the borders of Ukraine, and even they don't want to defend the borders of Taiwan. Not while our borders are totally undefended, wide open, and is just a, uh, a subway or an elevated train right into the country. A lot of soldiers are not re-enlisting when their service is up. They don't want to serve with homosexuals and transgendered. They don't want to serve in a military that's more concerned about transgender and homosexual than winning battles. They, they don't want to serve in a warm, fuzzy army. They want to serve in an army that's there to kill the enemy. I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't either. A singer who was with Ashadina in her early theater days was uh, homosexual. He later became a born-again Christian and married a woman. They got divorced and because uh, he still has feminine tendencies, even though he's, I guess you can't help how you're born, but who you have sex with is a choice. And he wrote a book called, No, I Was Not Born Gay. 
And what a voice on him. You couldn't tell if he was a man singing, a woman singing, or a teenage boy whose voice is just changing singing. I said to Ashadina, when I heard this guy's cassette, I said, this is the greatest voice of the 1980s. She said to me, I know, he's even better than I am. So you can imagine what a voice it is. I played it for people who thought it was a teenage Christian girl, because it was Christian music. And his voice was just amazing. And I have a statement, uh, a question to ask. If you wonder how Germany became Nazi Germany, when there were millions of people who disagreed with the Nazis in the beginning, in fact, in the beginning, only 3% of the country was Nazi. And look what they were able to do with 3%. But if you want to know how that can happen, and what would you have done if you were in Germany in the 20s and 30s? Well, just look at what the people in this country are doing. They're doing the same thing now that the German people did in Germany that was becoming Nazi Germany. And the last thing I have is going back to the winter of 1777 and 1778. Maybe you remember that winter as the winter of the Continental Army camping out at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. And it just happened to be one of the coldest winters on record. And they really suffered. And there was a Quaker, Pennsylvania has a lot of Quakers, riding his horse through the woods. His name was Isaac Potts. Good old Isaac Potts. Maybe you remember that, and I'm sure nobody knows who he is. He was, he's a Quaker, and he was actually against the War of Independence. As a Quaker, he wanted peace at any cost. And he's riding through the woods, and he sees a soldier on his knee praying all alone in the woods. As he gets closer, he sees it's General Washington with his sword on the ground on his right side and his blocked hat on the ground on the left side. And he's praying for guidance how to get these soldiers through this winter. And Isaac Potts goes back to his house and tells his wife, I just saw General Washington praying on the ground. He said, I never thought it was possible for a Christian man to also be a warrior. But he said, it's possible with this man. And he said, this man, if he said, God is certainly with this man. And of course, George Washington lost more battles than he won, but he won the important ones. And then we got, meanwhile, the Jewish community was funding the Continental Army. Chaim Solomon, who was, say, lower rich class, upper middle class, every penny went to the Continental Army. So if you're wondering about the Hilltop Youth, donate what you can. Chaim Solomon did, and he died shortly after the revolution. And on his deathbed, he said, at least I leave America a free nation. And he didn't mind dying for his cause. It was, maybe it was cancer in those days. And, uh, Oh, I forgot what I was going to say, the rest of it. But you get the idea that George Washington was not a deist, like they claim. They even had, when the country was formed, they even had Sunday services in the Capitol, and the president attended every week. And that includes Thomas Jefferson, who they claim was certainly a deist. He was not a Christian. These men were Christian, and they wanted the Jews to return to the land of Israel. They wanted Israel return to the Jews, most notably John Adams. One last thing about George Washington. We had two generals in our history. As you may know, of course with Americans, I don't know. As you may know, we had some five-star generals during the Second World War. Eisenhower, uh, Admiral King, Admiral Nimitz, eventually General Bradley. General Hap Arnolds, who, who was in charge of the Army Air Corps, they were made five-star generals because they were dealing with field marshals who were the equivalent of five-star generals. And they didn't want Eisenhower with four stars telling people that were equivalent in rank with five stars what to do. So they 
eventually promote him. George Marshall, back here in this country, was promoted to five stars. But in our history, we had two generals with six stars. I know nobody knows who. One was Black Jack Pershing, who led the American forces in the First World War. At the end of the war, they asked them, we want to promote you. How many stars would you like? They, did, they didn't even say, we'll give you a fifth star. They just asked him, how many stars would you like? He said six would be good. So they promoted posthumously George Washington to a sixth star too, even though when he was a general, he wore three stars on his brushes. Those are the pads up here with the streamers hanging down. So he was eventually promoted to six stars too. If five-star general is noted as general of the army, six-star general is called General of the Armies, plural. And that's it for this week. Okay, terrific. Uh, always interesting. Um, once again, we want to give you a chance to make a difference, to become part of history. And with the Hilltop Youth, you can do that because they are literally changing history. You're supporting an idealistic good cause that uh, that certainly is a cause that is not only worthwhile and adds meaning to your life, it's a cause that God wants us to support. Because God, the whole theme of the Bible is the Jews returning to the land of Israel and the battle so that they could become a light unto the nations and a holy nation, a nation of priests, and show the world uh, the right way. That's the theme of the Bible. That's what all the, the prophets and that's what everyone in the Bible is speaking to us about over and over again. This is your chance to make that reality and to become part of that reality. And certainly part of the reason you were put in this world was to do just that. For JTF until next week, this is Chaim Ben Pesach and for David Ben Moshe, Shalom.